So yes, first poem that uh, I want to talk about is my family, my father's family tree, which must have been very intense to uh, write. It seems autobiographical. I'm assuming it is. <laughs> the funny thing is, like uh, my father, maybe five years ago, he started to 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 write a family like a family tree kind right, of right. documentation for to record each right. like uh, for his family, like uh, all the offsprings and uh, all right. the kind of uh, achievement, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's so funny because uh, my brother, my brother is an officer, right? Right. So he highly praised him. Oh, for so sure. So for his part to introduce to introduce him, that has a huge part. Right, right. right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is a funny story. Anna's would be poet. Yeah. Next. <laughs> yeah. Then, then my my sister my sister in law called me, told me. He said your father just put your name very small part. Oh, no. <laughs> he just make fun. She just make fun, right? For right. that. Yeah. I said okay. Then later on, when I think when I thought about that. Because my father always helped, always, actually my father has a very high expectation for me. Right. Because uh, I always is uh, like uh, the high achievement yeah. in the academic, uh, mm -hmm. academic uh, field, right? So he always uh, hoped uh, in our family to have an officer, to have a, a like kind of a scholarship, scholar or something, right? right? But uh, I, I kind of, I have a very free for review, for review, and I want to do something. It's like, uh, how to say, I want to do what I want, I love, right? Right. So, but later on, for, for poetry, after I started writing, I know I wanted to go on this way, but I also know the reality. The reality is, is not so, so positive, like uh, optimist for poets, right? I needed to survive first. Right. Then I could continue writing. Yeah. So that's why I wrote this poem. Also, I wanted to. It's also my statement, right? Mm -hmm. To to show other people, or to show our readers or ourselves, we continue doing that. Right. To be a poet, but we know the reality is is like that. Yes. Yeah. So we. How to say, we. Um, but we still love to do that, and uh, one yeah. day we maybe make a wonderful achievement. So that's what I, in in this, uh, I also want to make this theme. So in the end, right. you can see. But I also understand my father because um, as parents, like right. me, I have my son. Yeah, so as a parent, even, yeah. yeah, even I know. He loves some something he loves, right? Yeah. But sometimes uh, for his future, we need to think it carefully. So, yeah. so that's uh, that's the way of our life. So. Yeah. Now, um, it all started from an ink spot. Your family started from an ink spot. Yeah. Your writing starts from an ink spot. That's a, a lovely metaphor. A very interesting metaphor. Doesn't every poet feel that they are discouraged by a dominant parent? Don't you feel oh. that every poet has that kind of an experience? You're, you're sharing an experience that's common to poets that maybe the parent is not supporting? Oh, okay. Because I'm a later bloomer, so like I started writing poetry in my middle 30s. Wow. So that's why I have no, my parents have no control for me. Right. So I don't have feel this, I don't have this kind of feeling. But right. I, but I understand other, other parents, or I understand the, the kind of feeling like my, like each, like when in the, when I was invited in the high school to talk about poetry, right? I use this poem as example as my first poem. Right. To to as my autography, right? Because I also wanted to let them understand the reality and also our passion, even with this kind of reality, right? Yeah. And uh, I told them a story like uh, when I told my uh, my father that I my book got published uh, or I won some award for poetry. Yeah. 
The first question they always ask me, how much money do you have? <laughs> do you get? <laughs> I said, no money. I'm a poet. What do you think? <laughs> sometimes I said, no money. Sometimes I said, oh, not so much money. Right. Right. I said, it's lucky if you already been, right? right. Just <laughs> so, it's, so that's why you already know the reality, right? Yeah. For that, what they think, they already use the, the money to judge if they think it's, you need a it's worse or not, right? So, yeah, yeah. So that's why. Yeah, now, and there's a line in there, I can feel his pause, and there's like a, a pause in that stanza. You, almost you'd expect it to be like the end of a stanza or even a stanza all on its own. It's so awesome. I can feel his pause. I'm reading it, and I can feel the pause, the full stop right within the stanza, and it's so powerful. I, I, it's, a, it's a great achievement, the way that you uh, put that in there. Thank you. Sometimes it's like a just, a, I mean, for, for my poetry, most of it came from my true feeling or from my daily life. If, if, even some poems is not from my own, but it's still from like a friends or family or some book, books or poems touched me. So, so after each time I wrote a poem, mm -hmm. myself are already touched by the poem. So yeah. I guess that's uh, that's why you also feel the pot. Maybe I wrote there, I, I also put the song. Yeah. <laughs> Make pot the single of my butt again, right. right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, maybe. Now as an engineer or IT professional, you have a certain rank and respectability. Do you feel that this betrays your identity as a poet? Because Be poets are not respectable people. But uh, but as an IT geek, a self-professed IT geek, you you know, have a certain position in society. You you know the funny thing is like okay, in IT field, people said I'm a geek. Right. It's a little bit ironic or joke. Right. It's kind of okay. I, geek is like other people don't think you are normal. Right. And it's like a kind of freaky freaky the person. Right? Yeah. So. So opposite, opposite as you said. So anyway, for me, yes, I I really believe not really believe. I experience a lot right now. A lot of people don't want to say I'm poet. Right. Because of the fear, then. Right. People think that crazy. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, hey, most poets they're not capable of having day jobs. They don't have business sense, you know. This is, yeah. You know. So that's why I always said I'm IT professional and I'm poet. I want to right. put both together. Right. You talk but, about the different faces or whatever. Yeah, There's your two different but, faces. But, but really, really, when I do my poetry, uh, a life or education event, and I guess. All the people know I'm very reasonable, reasonable person. I'm yeah. very logical, logical person, and also I'm very passionate person. Mm -hmm. So, so I think this is a very good way to combine, and our life needs that. Definitely. Like, uh, if I'm only engineering, like uh, then I, yeah. I will feel my life is boring, very, yeah. very boring, right? And if I'm only a poet, <laughs> then I will worry about my future, yeah. like my tomorrow's meal, or where it is, yeah. right? So that's why I really enjoyed it. And also, in this way, I also thank my company, like uh, IT company, yeah. and uh, gave me this opportunity to also, I can balance my life very well, so, yeah. Yes, you do have a very balanced life, for sure. But this balance really take, um, how to say, I almost, uh, like 2007, I almost gave up writing right. because I feel I'm, I feel very struggled. So I wanted to, I wanted to, how to focus on one, one field, then give up another. But right. uh, I tried, right. then I found I cannot. It's just too, too sad, too difficult for right. me. So then later I said, okay, I need to make a good balance. I, I, I want to keep both. Right. Yeah. Now, do you feel poets are engineers in a way? Yeah, because this is true. Because uh, like we play, some people said we are words, words smiths, right? Words smiths, yeah. we played with words. We yeah. make a game, make words games. Right. So it's also engineer of the words. Right. But the good thing is like uh, for some poets, 
the not only is engineer of the words, but also is the what a perfect ending to the poem, and like so many, so many of your endings, there's like a new beginning that comes out of the endings. I shall start a new scroll. So inherent in that ending is a beginning. I shall start a new scroll. Yeah. Poems often don't have full stops, unlike prose. Yours concludes with the notion of a beginning. Do you feel we all need to start a new scroll? Uh, like, uh, you know, as a poet, I think it's good to challenge yourself. So, for me, I wanted to start a new story. It's a kind of a challenge. Mm -hmm. I want to achieve more. Yeah. I want to write more. Or, and also, I want to write new things. Not yeah. That's why 2007, when I felt my limitation, right? Yeah. Then I, I decided I need to either quit or either go on and challenge myself. So right. I chose to go to the University of Toronto for okay. the night school, oh, take okay. courses. Because I wanted, I wanted, if I want to continue, I wanted to see my future. I wanted to have a plan for my future for poet poetry, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why I, I know as a poet, it's very difficult to survive. So how to survive? Yeah. So I wanted to later, if I can study to teaching, maybe they had some way to, to support myself. Sure. So that's why I go to the University of Toronto to, for two purposes. Okay. One is challenging myself to write more. Right. To see